Good evening, and welcome to St. Agnes. Today, we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings for today's liturgy can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1197, number 1197. Our entrance hymn is number 607, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 607. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask as Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord.
from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, on hearing that it was Jesus, sat by the, ro the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. <coughs> but he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus talked and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw his, aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Surprise, here I am. You'll find out soon why enough. But anyway, imagine being blind. I presume everyone here can see reasonably well. But shut your eyes for a moment. What would it be like never to have seen or to all of a sudden 
lose your sight and to live in darkness. That helps us appreciate what happens in the gospel. Poor Bartimaeus asks, Lord, I want to see. Jesus cures him, and he does so to show he's fulfilling the prophecies concerning the divine Messiah, just as we heard in the prophet Jeremiah. More importantly, our Lord gives Bartimaeus a spiritual vision. Bartimaeus sees Jesus. He sees the divine Messiah. At the end of the gospel, we read how Bartimaeus followed Jesus on the way. That's always that coding for he became a disciple and now followed a new path of life. My brothers and sisters, in the same way, we have received that same spiritual gift of faith, beginning in our baptism. To signify this, after the actual baptism, the priest presented to us or to our godparents, most likely, a lit candle. And the priest proclaimed, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of that light. Keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, May you go out to meet him with all the saints. The challenge for us, though, is to keep that light, that vision, so clear, so steady and firm in our own lives. We live in a world where we can become blinded by the darkness. Our world has darkness, no question about it. When we watch the news or various media, We see the darkness, the negativity, the hatred, the violence, and so on. Think how a person becomes blinded by that. Pope Francis just released a new encyclical on the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I haven't read the whole encyclical yet, but he does make a point that we can become blind because of consumerism, especially in our country, where all we think about is our material gain, having to have, always wanting to satisfy, rather than having contentment, rather than even having gratitude for what we have. He says we can become blinded by the technology. Technology can be so good, but think, if we focus just on these screens, then we become isolated. It's little wonder so many young people are depressed and feeling so lonely. It's all because they're living in this virtual reality that isn't reality, especially a spiritual reality. Well, we could go on about the darkness, but instead, you and I are called to live in the light, the light of Christ, and to see Christ each day in our lives. Our vision of life has to be through the lens of Jesus. We're following him as a disciple. This is why, for each of us individually, I'm always talking about taking time to pray. We have to see Jesus. We do that through reading sacred scripture, especially the gospels, by saying the rosary or other religious books, reading those, especially though, by letting our hearts talk to him, talking about our needs so we share our sorrows with Christ and see those sorrows or those challenges with Christ. We give thanks for the blessings we have, and we see that giving thanks in union with Christ. So our perspective, our vision of life has to change. That's what it is to be on the way. Also, we're called then to see our vocation, that Christ has called us to continue his mission as a faithful disciple. If you're married, or if you're married and have kids, then you see your vocation right away. You're called to help each other get to heaven, to see the Lord. You're called to make your home that sanctuary for the Lord where you see him, where you live by his actions. This is so important, especially for children in our world today. Also, we have a different vision of life. It's not simply here and now. It's not just this moment. This life comes to an end. We have a vision beyond this life. Only though, if we see Christ now, will we see Christ one day in heaven. 
if we don't see Christ now, if we blind ourselves because of this world and by sin, that blindness will continue on. So with that, my brothers and sisters, I'm here because it's just one of those pastor things to talk about the vision of our parish. So point number one is that in the bulletin today that you will see just our little summary financial statement that we submit, this is partial of the financial statements that we submit to the diocese. So each year our accountant comes in, he reconciles all the books and so on, and then our finance council and the parish reviews this, and this is a simple summary, and I have an explanation here. So thank you for your support of the parish, because this shows you have a vision. You have a vision that by helping us here, this building, more importantly this parish, who we are, brings a light into this world. So I thank you for that. Now I will say though, it's always good to examine our own situation and see am I giving what I really can to help this mission as a parish. I say that simply because we have employees and you know it's hard, it's the cost of living is hard here in this area. Also health care benefits I've heard are going up 8% this year. We provide two thirds of the cost for our employees. So please consider what you can do. As your pastor, I can only do with what resources I have. And whatever I tell you, be assured, I'm telling myself too, because I reevaluate what I give to the parish as far as finances, so that's part of it. Second point is, you may have noticed behind the school, there's like this section that's been marked out. Well, that's because Last year, the PTO raised over $400,000 to put in a little turf field. It's not so little, it's 50 feet by 150 feet, it's the quarter size of a football field. So there we will have a nice play area for the kids rather than just the asphalt. So the PTO raised that money. We did have one large donor who was an alumni family to give a significant portion. We're waiting for Arlington to give us the building permit. We've only been waiting for like three months now because it's been this back and forth kind of thing. You think the simplest little project would be so easy to get a building permit? Not in Arlington. So hopefully though, we'll be able to have that permit soon and that'll be accomplished, the contractor says, maybe in six weeks. So that would be wonderful for our kids. So third thing, when we did the renovations and we knocked out the front of the church to make a front door, we lost those little memorials to the unborn kids or other children who had died. Well, we do have the nameplates, but I was wondering, what do we do with this? So again, in the bulletin, you'll see a flyer. Where the outdoor stations of the cross is, I thought it would be nice to have bricks engraved with the names of those who had been remembered on that wall. So that will be a memorial. But then I thought it might be nice for other people if they want to remember loved ones who've passed on in that garden. The Stations of the Cross are significant because by praying them we can gain an indulgence and that can be applied to those that we've loved who've passed on from this life. So if you're interested in having a loved one memorialized and remembered in that outdoor area, then please complete this. You can do it on a website, all the information's here, or you can come by the office. But it's a beautiful way. So the bricks, you can see them here, but they're engraved. So it's a nice way to remember others. Next thing, we've had some good news, that our candles have gone down in cost. <laughs> One thing went down in cost this year. So, you'll notice the little signs say if you have one of these larger candles, $3 offering. If you use one of the little candles, suggested 50 cent offering. Now, my brothers and sisters, I'll tell you a story. When I was a little kid, I loved lighting candles. We didn't have them at St. Bernadette's, but when we'd go to other churches like St. Dominic's downtown or the Shrine in D.C., 
I loved to be able to go light a candle. And my parents taught us from the beginning, earliest beginnings, that you say your prayer, you can light your candle, or you can say your prayer then, and even though you aren't praying, that candle represents your prayer continuing on and the flames pointing up to heaven, to God, and it's giving light in this world. So it's a beautiful way to think about prayer. So I hope you parents take some time to teach your children this. This is a wonderful Catholic devotion that we have. Now, I'm not saying this because I want to make more money or something like that through candle offerings, but I think it's a way to teach our children the importance of going to the little shrine area, lighting that candle, saying a prayer. The other part that I just remembered is we have all these beautiful state saints. Well, those saints were lights in this world. So we are remembering their light continues on to touch our lives, so we should be like that also. Good. Next point is we have the election coming up. We have some booklets, a novena for the election. You probably remember, too, that we had this other one-page prayer. I encourage you, between now and Election Day, say this for our country. We need God's good guidance, and we need the Lord's providence. You know, it's like the Old Testament. When the Jews did what God wanted, things were doing really well. But you know what? When they turned their backs on God, and they started following pagan ways, punishment came. Not so much just as a punishment, but to wake them up, to get them back. So my brothers and sisters, again, a different vision of life. Where are we going as a country? Say this prayer. We need God's intervention. And then lastly, Father Pinizzato. He's doing quite well. So he's still having therapy. He is able to walk much better, usually use a little cane. He has trouble still standing for more than 20 minutes. Overall, though, he's doing very well, so he thanks you for your prayers and your support. So with all that said, my brothers and sisters, keep your eyes on Christ. And remember, we're called to be this light in the world so that others can see Jesus too. It's easy to curse the darkness, but as Mother Teresa said, it's better to light a candle. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have all gathered here, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore ask Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessing and life. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis 
Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. For the conversion of our nation, that we will turn our hearts back to the Lord and defend the sanctity of life, marriage, and the family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. For justice and peace among nations, especially in Ukraine, Middle East, and Africa, and for those who serve to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Israeli hostages and all the innocent victims of war, terrorism and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the effects of hurricanes, Lynn <coughs> and Milton, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us and for our parish seminarians, Gabriel Godey, Michael Gibbons, John Anthony Bunu, and Andrew Garcia, for Sister Monica Baptiste Welling and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, Dominican sisters in Nashville, and for Joanna Shaw, postulants for the Carmelites in Port Tobacco, Maryland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Father Pinazotto, Alex Parkson, and John Tui, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For Donat Murray, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 713, I Has Not Seen, number 713. <laughs>
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of yours. Let us pray in your name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, 
so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a thing that we Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with us. Let, Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
few announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for Agape, an organization that helps mothers in need to have their babies. November 1st is the Solemnity of All Saints, a holy day of obligation. So Masses will be offered at 6.30 a.m., 9 a.m., and 7 p.m. November 2nd marks the Feast of All Souls. A novena of Masses is being offered for the souls of our deceased loved ones. If you would like to remember your loved ones, please complete an envelope available on the entrance tables and return it to the, in the offertory or to the rectory. On November 7th, our St. Agnes Knights of Columbus will meet at 7 p.m. Any man interested in joining is invited to attend. There will be a formal exemplification ceremony. Please contact Charles Palmer at the parish office for further information. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs may, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 896. Sing we of the Blessed Mother, number 896.